Welcome to the D&D Fitness Radio Podcast, brought to you by your hosts, Don Saladino from New York City and Derek Hansen from Vancouver, Canada. We're just going to keep turning our heads sideways. <laughs> yeah. Oh, are we going to do this way? Your orientation. Yeah, there, there we yeah. go. <laughs> What's going on? Hi. How are you? Nice to meet good, you. Good, good. How about yourself? I'm Paul. Nice to meet you. Paul, I'm Don. Nice to meet you. What's Hi, going nice on? Nice to meet you. Good, good. So I wanted to start this before we get into this. I got to <laughs> I gotta see if I can screen share um, uh, some of Paul's fights. Mahmoud Hassan. How about that one? Let's see. Uh, let's see if I can screen share this. Share, share. Can you see that, Don? Mm-hmm. Okay. So Paul's fighting this guy. <clears throat> Mahumid Hellboy Hassan. Hellboy. It's a gr- I mean, great nickname. You get the Hellboy. Oh God. He must work this out. Ugly. This was ugly. This is ugly for 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 who? I'm assuming Gabal is an animal. Paul, you're an animal already. I know it. I love it. No, no, no. Paul, typhoon. I like Typhoon better than Hellboy. I think that's cooler sounding, to be honest with you. <laughs> this is funny. Fighting out of Vancouver, Canada. This is fantastic. Okay, so let's... What there a crowd. Go. Oh, it's big, big time. So it's the Typhoon versus Hellboy. The typhoon comes in. Yeah, see, oh, this is good. what happened. It was a big melee. It was bad. And the typhoon is just good God. Oh, I won the fight, by the way. <laughs> oh, I, I assumed I assumed that happened. I mean, normally. Oh, this. Oh, God. Oh my God. I'm waiting for it. Like, my heart's racing right now. Like so. <laughs> Uh, I can't see. <laughs> yeah, about to say your 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 one of your eyes are gone right now. So, <laughs> actually, oh, how did you get out of this? How did you get out of this, Paul? No, it wasn't deep. I was on the side. I was fine. I was just gonna. I was just. I was just tired. So I was just like kind of, just resting on him. I was just resting, but it kind of really uncomfortable when someone's trying to choke you. <laughs> about to say, I don't, I'm almost out of gas. <laughs> So yeah, it was pretty ugly, but it was an interesting fight. Um, uh, nobody knew that. Um, I didn't really say anything, but my left, my 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 open eye, which was the good eye, no, which was my bad eye because I had like uh, two retinal detachment surgeries. So and then my closed eye was kind of like, yeah, blind at the moment. So I had like maybe I don't know seventy or seventy so, percent vision on my. On he the didn't good come eye. out for the the fourth round, right? Yeah, he didn't come out. You didn't come. I was pissed because I was like, one of us got to go down because uh, we're fighting for a bonus. They, they put up a fifty thousand dollar bonus that night, and then but, oh, yeah. So, so, so if he came out and you dropped him, which he obviously knew was going to happen, right? I mean, he was he was done. You would have gotten an extra. I, he, you would have gotten an extra fifty k. Yeah, oh, I was bullshit. pretty pissed. I was pretty choked, <laughs> but but he was a cool guy. We we had a good fight, so it is what it is. But. Yeah, but the, the guys that got the 50K that night, got, he got soccer kicked in the face. I, I saw him in the hospital. His nose was like here. <laughs> My nose is pretty bad, but his nose was like on his forehead. So I was like, well, it wasn't so bad. I mean, your eyes look, I mean, your eye looks perfect now. I mean, did you, is, was there any, was there any Fractured orbital, damage? fractured orbital. Like it was like, yeah. So see, like, if you see my nose, it's kind of like a hockey stick. Oh, happy Canada today. But uh, yeah, oh, actually like, like yesterday. See my nose, better than like that. a hole in my face somewhere here, so it swells up all the time. But that's why I don't fight anymore. I don't well, think ago, so. How long ago was that? That was five years ago, I think. 2014, okay. I think. 2014, I think. It was a while back. So now I'm I, I'm working as a stunt actor. So I train with Derek so yeah. all the time. So I'll, I'll let's start from the beginning, Don. So. I thought this was, uh, Paul is always interesting to talk to. I've known Paul for almost 20 years, started as a football player, pro football player in the CFL. And then I said, oh, this guy's got some athletic ability. And I was working for Canada bobsleigh 
And then I've said, let's put him in a bobsleigh, right? He barely fit. <laughs> At that time, you're probably like 280 pounds. And then he went, did some bobsleigh training, had some fun with that. He'll tell you a story about that. Oh, then, yeah. Then, then he got into uh, uh, probably sure. fighting, started with boxing, then MMA. He went and tried out for WWE. They said he was too old. He'll tell you about that. Then he got into stunt stuff. And now he's doing almost like regular acting. Like he's like a regular actor now. And uh, he, he, he'll tell you about his work with uh, uh, Ryan. And, uh, you know, he's no, been just a stunt guy. Yeah, I'm just, just on the floor. Yeah, yeah. So, so I'll, I'll, I'll let you start off, Don. And uh, Paul will. You just, were doing be- you were doing beautifully. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm I, sitting here and I'm and I'm absorbing. Why don't you that, take it from there? It's that's fantastic. the Reader's Digest version. So, um, yeah. Well, Paul, it's Paul. It, 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 it's amazing to meet you. Derek has spoken so highly about you, and I was super excited that you were coming on today. So we really appreciate it. Um, so that's so so your your focus your entire life was naturally fighting, and then suddenly you were like, okay, I have a different focus now. No, I no. I, I, actually, I was a football player. For most of oh, my really? life. Yeah, yeah, I was a football player. I played at Simon Fraser University where um, Derek was the uh, strength and conditioning coach for a little while, but I was before that. And then I started my life as a uh, uh, primarily a football player and then kind of got into some random things, you know, getting bounced around CFL and Arena Football League and all over the place. And then, yeah, ran into Derek and, and then he sent me on a bobsled uh, tryout and that was really horrible. I was, I think I was you know, one of the first people in bobsled Canada to fell out, fall out of the bobsled. That was kind of <laughs> not too cool. But <laughs> so, yeah. So, and I went on a little, uh, uh, I guess I, I've always been, I think I'm like an athletic hippie. I guess I go around the world just go, trying to do random things all the time. So, yeah, it's been pretty interesting and life has been, yeah, it's been quite an interesting journey so far. And so, I, talk I, to you. I'm, so sorry, yes. kid. Continue. Con- no, continue. no, keep, go, 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 go. I, I, I can talk all day. So, like, how did so, so, so the, so the stunt man into now acting. So you've, you've done some stunt work. Did you, did you work with Ryan Reynolds? Yes, I have. I actually worked with Ryan on Deadpool too. I was kind awesome. of the guy he makes fun of. You know, like, it, um, if you ever, I think in the movie they only used my butt, but uh, in the special edition we actually show this stuff. I got kind of cut, but we had a little scene where he kind of looked at my crotch. And then he kind of made a comment about it. So I was that guy. That was kind that's of interesting. Amazing. During the filming awesome. of it was quite interesting. Yeah. That's funny. That's awesome. Did he kill you? Yeah. Did he kill you in that scene? Yes, he did. But he, uh, we shot the we shot it, but we ne- um, it never been uh, it never showed. So it was cool. So I didn't technically die. So hey, hey, I can come back technically. We take it. We get Derek. We got to get a screenshot. I'll send it over to him. He's. Uh, I've, been <laughs> for, I've, been, I've been working. I've been oh. coaching Ryan for like twelve years. He's one of my. He's like. He's like a brother. Well, he's, he's a, such a nice. Guy. He's a really nice guy. Really, yeah, really, he really nice. Dude. He really is an amazing person. I mean, he's just. Um, uh, I can't say a better thing about him. But yeah, Derek, you and I still have to get him on the show one of these days. He's just been crazy busy lately. He actually brought up once. He was like, he's like, I want to come on the podcast. I was like, all right, let's get you on. And then he went off and shot a movie, and I don't want to bother him so i'm very sensitive to asking him for things but uh you know, well, if is. you send him a, a screenshot of paul's crotch he'll he'll recognize it immediately no yeah, paul dm that can you send that to derek later and then derek <laughs> will send it to me so we don't have to you know, we don't have to offend anyone on the show get a little yeah little, you know. not offending anybody on the show <laughs> oh, I was, it was quite funny i have to say yeah yeah i never knew there was so many names for my crotch in one day Oh my God, that's fantastic! So, so talk to us about the acting now. What do you? What are your? Uh, what? What's your aspirations? What do you? Where are you trying to go uh, from? I'm, working, stunt work? I'm more like a stunt actor, so a kind of actor doing my own stunts. I'm working on something right now. Can't really talk about it because um, I guess it's going to be. We've been going at it for the last three months, so yeah, yeah. I'm, that's that's all I'm really going to say. And uh, yeah, and also I could say maybe Disney production, but other than that, I'm not going to say anything else. Cool. Well, we wish so, you best yeah, of luck. So it's, we- I, I, I guess it's a pretty good break, uh, a break for me and for, from COVID and stuff. I, I feel quite fortunate to be, be working and working a lot. So, yeah. Well, listen, I mean, transitioning from the crotch work to, you know, <laughs> a different type of work, it's going to be, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome for everyone. I, right. I mean, yeah, it's be a good I, thing. I think so. I hope, I, I, I really hope <laughs> so. So yeah, it should be interesting, you know, going from a guy, football player to, uh, guy fighting all the time and getting beat up all the time and doing stunts and then yeah and then now 
kind of getting to do a little bit of acting here and there. So it's not too bad. I'm pretty happy. But I you find you very well-rounded, right, Derek? <laughs> very well-rounded. Hey, that's what I say. I'm quite well-rounded. I'm, like, oh, I'm okay at everything, but great at nothing. But it's okay. I, I, I hang in there with everybody, you know? But Derek, start. Tell us about something. your childhood. Tell Don yeah. about your childhood, like, you know, growing up as a an Asian youth and uh, – and where you grew up and you were going to, what you, what aspirations did you have as a young man? And then how did things change? Um, I don't know. I guess I was a little nerdy computer nerd kid, like from Taiwan. And then I immigrated over, I grew up in Toronto, Ontario. And then, yeah, I got repicked on a lot because I was, um, there's, if you, if you ever, uh, you can show a picture, I think it's on my Instagram. It's pretty, it's pretty ridiculous. So I, I, I would pick on me too, if that happened. <laughs> So yeah, I got picked on a lot. So yeah, I didn't, and then got into football, got into different types of sports, and and yeah, and then and things um, things went from there, and got a scholarship to SFU, and then went to, and I got drafted. Um, I, I guess I was one of the first Asian players drafted in the CFL, and then I went from there. I had a little cup of cup of coffee and blah blah blah. That's that. <laughs> so just assuming you were you were running back? No, I was a defensive lineman. I was like about 280. Oh, I'm about to say, I was about to say, how tall are you? 6'3". You're 6'3", 280. Yeah, now now I'm 240, but I was like about 280. Not your typical oh Asian. How be, I, was, I was about to say, that's one. Derek said it, I didn't. But, but two, um, how, how tall was, uh, was a Hellboy or Hellraiser or whatever the hell his name was? Yeah, who's, who's he was like, like, we're about the same height. Were you? Same he height, looked taller. 6'3". Six, 6'3". Three? Six, three. Six two, six three. Yeah, I'm like six three. You know, it's it's deceiving right now because you're sitting. Yeah. And yeah, you, you just can't tell. I mean, who who knows? <laughs> I thought you were going to tell me. Hey, you were come, like, on, come on, come on, come I, on. Come on. people all ne don't necessarily. You got have two to inches on me, man. Hey, <laughs> listen, you stop. You got two I'm inches on me. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it, Dave. Well, yeah, like the one of the best stories though is I sent Paul off to Calgary to do bobsleigh training and testing and yeah I, I fell out of the bobsled yeah and so that's your fault they have a they have a facility it's called this the ice house or I think it's called right and so it's just a pushing facility where you push the bobsled you jump in and then it goes up down and then it comes up a ramp and then it, the, the sled comes back and then you just do pushes right so you don't do the whole track so they I guess Paul was pushing and he tried to step in and you sort of step on part of the bobsled and jump in and he slipped and then he fell out and into the, the, whatever the corridor thing where the, but the Bob, so he falls out, the bobsled go, keeps going, it goes up. And then <laughs> now it's coming back to crush his head. And, and I had to jump off the side. And then I, I'm like, I stepped on a refrigeration pipe. Thank God. That was like a flash before my eyes. And then, you know what, after that, I like I I didn't re I decided I'm not gonna bobsled anymore. So, <laughs> so I well, uh, we ended up meeting Brett Hart's. Uh, uh, oh brother. yeah, you tell him this. Bruce. Tell him this. Yeah, I uh, um I think it's Bruce Hart. I think that was a long time ago. But now we we ended up going to the dungeon, and then I met. Um, I ended up meeting uh, meet met Stu Hart in his house before he passed away, and it was like quite quite an experience. And that that I guess. That was foreshadowing for later on when I got a WWE trial like that, almost 40 years old. That was pretty funny. <laughs> so listen, so you, you're obviously like it. You're obviously incredibly athletic, right? I mean, you had a you you were you're drafted the CFL. Um, you're a big dude. You can fight. You can obviously move. Like it's actually a huge compliment that I thought you were shorter because I'm looking at the way that you move and normally a guy at six three is not going to move like that. What was the transition to bobsledding? Like, what did you feel that type of training was like when you were joking around about, you know, slipping and falling out of the bobsled? Like, was that something that you started becoming passionate about? Obviously that was just a, 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 a mishap. What did you have? What did you didn't have that you needed to be performing at a higher level at bobsledding? Can, can you talk about the bobsledding piece of it I, a little I, bit? I, like, it was a little bit weird. I, like, I, I got into running track with Derek. I really, it's one of the things that I'm, like, passionate about. I still run this day. I'm 43 years old. And then I, I, I still run with all these professional uh, professional level and college level athletes and high school. Yeah, so I train with these guys. It makes me feel young. So I, this is something that we started about 20 years ago. Yeah, training with Derek, running and doing all that stuff. And I, I felt like it was a transition towards um, 
I, I, I feel like I was kind of in transition <laughs> because I, um, I was in between. I got cut from, I think, Montreal Alouettes that time. And I was just trying to find something else to fill in the space. And then and, and I felt that that was one of the sports that um, I, I might be able to do pretty good. At. I ran a decent 40, about 280. I, I ran over five seconds, which was not bad. So not terrible. So like in the four nine range. So I was like, not terrible. So I was like, let's let's give it a shot. If, uh, if I if I cut some weight, but I don't know. It's a little bit. It was a little bit confusing, right? Especially pushing from the side because when you're like running as fast as you can, you got to cross your feet and hit your box, hit your foot on this box. I slipped, and after that, I just had a mental like uh, mental thing. I didn't really want to get back in a bobsled again because when you get when you get sent down a hill flying like Superman, not that cool. <laughs> So most of those, so so most of those people pushing the the bobsled, obviously they're 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 big, but they're incredibly fast, right? I mean, is that is yes. that are those the characteristics of a bobsledder? Is that what you yes. call it, a bobsledder? Is it yeah. is it someone like the bigger, the faster, the the better to move that amount of mass? Correct. Yes, because I guess the bobsled can weigh us. The bobsled can weigh a certain amount, like total. So if you have a big guy that can run fast, you push a sl- lighter sled. So I guess that's. That, that's the reason for behind like recruiting football players and a uh, uh, big fast athletes to put in those sleds so you can so you have a big fast guy pushing a lighter sled so who would be considered like if you look at the best bob sledder in the world what is he running the 40 in? what is he what how big are, I, or I, she given like from what i remember that was a long time ago but i'm assuming like the top guys in the world i guess they had a guy uh, jesse lumsden uh, a cfl guy he played in the nfl I'm thinking like those uh, the top notch guys are probably running in the four fives, maybe four fours yeah. because they a lot of a lot of track athletes. I was, are you I, figuring? Are you yeah. figuring they're around 200, 250 pounds? No, I think I think ideally um, about two thirty to two hundred forty pounds. Right. Ideally, because I don't I think they don't want them too big because yeah I I was told I had to lose weight I was trying, and then I got a I, and then I ended up um, I ended up getting an CFL contract so I. I ran off and had another uh, cup of coffee somewhere. <laughs> Dig. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I think because he was big, we thought, well, okay, yeah, he's got the weight and enough speed. And so we thought, oh, what the hell? Let's try this, right? And I think uh, they had trouble fitting a helmet on him and stuff like that. But other than that. Oh, I, they always have a trouble help fitting a helmet on me. This thing is, like, really big. <laughs> always. Even the Lions. I still, I still remember my first day getting equipment. My I, my helmet was so big. He, uh, Cato, rest in peace. He said, he said, I only have like four or five of these helmets in like uh, that, uh, uh, these big helmets. And I, you're, I think one of three guys in the history of BC Lions to put it in this helmet. My face mask was so, my face mask was so tight it blew up. My steel face mask blew up after my first hit in practice. So they had to order a custom face mask. This big di- damn head of mine. Maybe I could take, that's why I could take all those shots. But no more, no more, no more. Getting cer- in the face. Certainly, all of these different things like make you like. I, I I find it interesting that you're not having trouble finding work in the acting realm or the, <clears throat> the stunt realm because you're quite unique looking, <laughs> for lack of a better well, word. Thanks. thanks. I'm funny looking. <laughs> funny looking. So if they want somebody, oh, I who... didn't say that. I didn't say funny. I didn't say funny. <laughs> but if they want a villain. Like you're, I assume you're, you're, you're playing villains most of the time, Paul. Yeah. Always bad guy. I'm always the bad guy, you know, like a uh, stereotyped into like eight, some type of Asian gangster, like triad or, <laughs> or whatever stereotyped into that kind of thing. Uh, oh, yeah. Right, yeah. Right. yeah. Oh, like, my story of my life, but it's okay. Like, I, I know when I fall down, I make money. So it's okay. It's oh, not, not, not so bad. One of his <laughs> best gigs, Don, one of his best gigs, you've seen him before. If you've seen night at the museum, he was in all three of those. He was one pull of them. Come on, Dave. Kind of pull it up. Att- Attila the Hun. The, I have a picture. I'll post it. But, it's, you know, Attila the Hun, his his triad yeah, or his group. The hench- henchmen. And then, yeah. So it was like, get to walk around the museum for like three movies. That was pretty awesome. So yeah. And you, s- sorry, but Derek, go, go ahead. Oh, I was just saying, like, you know, again, he was telling me stories about hanging around Ben Stiller, Robin Williams, and, and just good, you know, just good stories like that. Yeah. So what's your, so Paul, what's your, what's your training like now? I mean, you were, you were, you always into the weight room Were you always, you said you loved the track, but 
Is that yes, I love. I used to love the weight room. I like. I Derek <laughs> filmed me. I did two twenty five thirty seven times. He, he he filmed it. So wow. I was big into the weight room type of guy, and then uh, yeah, and but yeah, now these days I don't lift too much weights. Um, I like to um split my time into between all different types of activities. Like, uh, what do I do these days? So I still box. I still kick box. Um, once in a while I pl I play around with jujitsu. And then I run track with Derek uh, once a week, maybe sometimes twice a week. And then um, started getting into capoeira. That was really, that's been kind of difficult. And then um, I I still do some stunt training, so like you know, falling, rolling, uh, sword like playing with swords and all that kind of stuff. So it's you know keep keeps me pretty busy. So it's a uh, and then I do some coaching here and there. So it's 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 pretty fun. Life is pretty hey, but interesting. But also, I, I mean, it sounds like your training's very, very dynamic. So do you find that even at 43, I'm 44, Derek's a little bit older. Uh, do you find that's actually helped um, maintain the resiliency of your body? I mean, a lot of your injuries came from contact injuries, right? Like getting kicked in the yes, nose yes. and the face, etc. But do you, but do you find by balancing out the sprinting with a lot of the stunt training, if you're doing it the right way, can actually, you know, I, I think, I think understanding and knowing how to fall, um, you know, can actually be very helpful. Right, a lot oh, of no, totally. that should have, yeah. So can totally. you talk about that a little bit? Because I think that's interesting. Yeah, like learning, like one of the big things is like you fall down. So hey, when you fall down 50 times and like sometimes 30, 40 times in a day, being able to pick yourself up, you, you gotta learn how to do it. So yeah, I do that. Um, yeah, so so some some days you're learning how to roll, how to fall, and yeah, and yeah, so I can be better at my job. Because some yeah. some you can't be like, yeah. I'm done. I fell ten times. I'm good. No, <laughs> you do it till you do it till they you, you do it till they say you, you do it till um what is it till they, uh, till they're done. All right, All right. It was funny when you end up bringing up Ryan's name, Derek. He's um uh, he's uh shooting this movie right now with Will Ferrell where they're it's like a musical, and Ryan's in Boston and he's been doing a ton of dance training. Oh, wow. And uh, like world class dance coaches, chore choreographers, and he's still continuing to do his lifting. But it's fantastic to see how much time he's focusing right now on mobility and dancing and learning to kind of move and transition and elasticity. And I was messaging him the other day. I'm like, how's your body feeling? It's like amazing. It feels amazing. And it's like there there is something to be said about that. You know, someone who's in their you know early to mid 40s now. In in time, you know, we all kind of Paul, we all have a tendency to stay away from. You know, moving a certain way and the fact that you're still staying well connected to it i think it's amazing oh my god wait i remember this i remember <laughs> this that was you oh uh, yeah yeah that was me quite a bit younger like 10 years ago that's, that's hilarious it's fantastic yes I, I i got into this like yeah this was really random so i was like yeah i and then got into the stunts and stuff and, and learning martial arts after that because a couple of a bunch of the guys were like hey uh, do you know any martial arts? I said, no, I play football. And then you're Asian stunt guy. You better go learn some martial arts. So I went to learn martial arts, but apparently I learned the wrong one. I learned MMA. So yeah, it was a little bit different. But yeah, they, uh, they like all the Taekwondo and karate and stuff like that. So the kicking and stuff, it's good. But tell, uh, tell Don, it worked out, it worked Paul, out pretty good. Tell yeah. Don about your uh, last second. Hey, you know uh, what? Don <laughs> actually looks like Ryan. They look like, they, they look alike. I, I was just looking. I was like, "Is that Ryan?" I met That's him very once. Fun. I met him a few times, so I was like, "He kind uh, of looks awesome. like him." Well, appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. I even with the shirt it. off. Even with the shirt off. Um, oh. uh, I was going to say, tell Don about your last second like uh, bid for the heavyweight championship. Like, what happened there? Oh God, I, I'm going to write a movie about this one day. So I was on a TV show. Um, I think it was called Second Chance, uh, or I think. What were they? Yeah, second chance. I, it was a Fox TV show. They, um, I was I was doing a little uh, stunt acting gig for a couple episodes, and then um, at the um, and then I, I got a short notice call. And originally I was number two contender for one championship. So there's three big ma major promotions: UFC, uh, Bellator, and one championship. That's like uh, recognized um, world class MMA promotions. Um, and then I was fight. I, I was on like a four or five four or five fight win streak, something like that. And then I was filming this show. And I, I, as we wrapped, uh, uh, getting close to Christmas time, 
Um, like at the beginning of, uh, at the end of November, I guess, I get a phone call. I, I didn't get the title fight. So I was a little mm. sad, but I, but they informed me I was going to fight in uh, January. And then after, after we finish the thing, I get a phone call, be like, hey, are you interested in coming out to the Philippines? Because that's where the uh, world championship fight was at and be a backup fighter. And then, uh, and then you're scheduled to do some um, media and stuff. So I was like, cool, we'll pay for it. I was like, cool. I, and at the timing worked out because I was, uh, we don't go back till January for filming. So I was like, well, well, let's do it. And then as I get to Tokyo, they, as I was getting to Tokyo buying a hamburger, because I didn't think I was, go- there was no way I was going to fight three days before. And I get a phone call from Matt Hume saying, hey, um, you ready? I was like, ready for what? I literally had a hamburger in my hand. And then and he's like, yeah, you're going to fight for the world title. And, then, and and obviously we're in Asia, so it's a day ahead. So I'm like, well, we're going to do this on Saturday night. And I was like, it's Tuesday, right? So I got four days. Nope. And I was like, damn, it's in Tokyo. So it's Wednesday. So I was like, damn, I got three days. So yeah, and then I ended up doing it. I ended up uh, giving my hamburger back to the lady that I bought it from. And then, and, and then and that goes on for the three days, the craziest, the craziest three days of my life. Fought for the world title. Um, I like, think 38 years old, didn't do so good. You can see the YouTube, we got knocked out like 27 seconds, but it is what it is. That's another story. <laughs> what did well, you have to do from a cut? Did you have to cut? How much weight did you, you hand? No, you I'm hand a heavyweight, so I don't have to cut. I weigh 250 why'd you, pounds. Why'd you, why'd, you, why'd you give the burger back? <laughs> Because you, you, because I, I can't eat a hamburger. I'm fighting in three days, so I literally <laughs> had a hamburger. I was in Tokyo airport. I'll, I'll, I'll never, rem- I'll never forget this. I was like, I, my coach was with me, and I was like, so hey, you don't think we're gonna fight, right? He's like, no. They told me originally it was five percent chance. I was like, all right, whatever. So I'm like, so I literally, I still always remember this. I check my phone. I ordered this hamburger. I'm gonna get it, and then I see ten missed phone calls, and I'm like. Why are they calling me 10 times? So I call, I had the hamburger in my hand and then he tells me this while my face is gonna drop. And he's like, are you sure, are you, where are you? I was like, uh, I'm in Tokyo. He's like, good, you're on the plane. And I was like, oh, uh, what happened? He's like, the other guy didn't get on his flight. So now I'm like, well, you're, 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 you're up. And I was like, up for what? And he's like, you're fighting for the world title. I was like, oh my God. And I literally was like, uh, here you go. I gave it back to this to, to this Japanese lady that sold me the hamburger. I literally gave it back, and I was like, "Damn, I can't eat this anymore." So did yeah. you get? Did you let me ask you? Let me ask you a question. Were you were you were you at all nervous? Were you like were you like oh, really so wait, anxious wait, going there? Let, let me ask you, Don. If you were gonna fight for the heavyweight championship of the world in three days' notice, while you're like off the couch, would you be nervous? Yeah, but I have a feeling you're you might be wired a bit differently than Derek and I. Like you're, you're like just you sitting here talking about it, you're very like nonchalant about it. So I don't know if you're one of those. And honestly, oh yeah, I, I, I'm just gonna let you. I I, I <laughs> peed in my cup a little bit when I when, when I peed in my cup a little bit while I was walking out there because you know you think about you know on a movie set and then all of a sudden I'm at home chilling and then all of a sudden three days later I'm in like. A, a, a Manila, and then I walk out. There was twenty three thousand people, and then staring at you. And I'm sitting there going, "Oh my God, what did I get myself into?" And I, I still, I always remember walking down to my walkout because I'm fighting the Filipino hero Brendan Vera. He's a well known, uh, well known U- ex UFC fighter. And then um, twenty three thousand people, like packed, walking down the ramp, and then I'm sitting there. It was like silent. The only person I heard was my sister going, go, Paul. And I'm like, all right, at least I got somebody. I walk in there and I'm just like, complete silence. And you, you hear his damn song come out. And then all of a sudden, holy cow, the stadium was rocking. I felt the cage just shake. So it was quite oh, so interesting. You're, so, you're, so, you're, so your heart rate was, was north of about 170 before he even came oh, out. On oh, the yeah, road. probably. Probably. Yeah. Hey, I'm glad it didn't last long, or else probably got sued by Fox. What did, he, what, did he, like, yeah, what did he Yeah, what, what, what did he hit you with? Was it, was it, was it a combination? No, was it, was I, it, was it, you could see the fight. There's the, the, the fights on, I'm sure it's on his highlight reel. And then um, <laughs> he kicked me in my leg. I felt like somebody put a bat to my leg. And then I was like, oh my God. I was like, damn, if I, I I'm like, so I'd rather get knocked you. out. And, 
so he so he so he so he stunned you. So he kind of woke you up with a little love. Yeah, he it. kicked my leg. I I've never I'm not, I, honestly I've never never been leg kicked so hard in my life. And then I was like, oh my god, this is going to be interesting. And then I rushed in. I rushed in because I was like, you know what? I'd rather go lay in my grave. I'd rather go out, go out like, <laughs> I'd rather go out gloriously than just get dropped by leg kick. So I went for it and then caught me with something, got dropped. It is what it is. You guys, it's 27 second clip. So you guys can show that. That's quite interesting. All right, we're watching it now. <laughs> Good for you, Paul. You actually got a couple shots on him. Yeah, I did a few. It was okay, but you know, heavy us heavyweights. If we did, if uh, we land the shot, see, look what happened. Bang! <laughs> All right, but you know what? Listen, man, but that was that was respectable. Those first twenty something seconds, you didn't look nervous. You 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 went in there. Show me that again quickly. Like, okay. you know, honestly, Derek, I want to assess this for one second because you weren't giving yourself enough credit here. So you, you got a knee in. Yeah, man. Yeah, come on, man. You were, you were, you look jacked up. That must have been the kick there because he it, it, it kicked my leg like three times, and I was like, "Damn!" Good, and you're coming at him. You're not rolling over, man. I'm not. I'm trying. I'm like, well, it is what it is. I got caught. Uh, yeah, this that, is was, that was. This is what happens right. at heavyweights. So it, it is what it is. But I. Hey, I, it, but it was for. It was, this is the best I, part I here, Don. Myself. This is the best part here. He goes, Vera's concerned, goes over to see Paul. Paul's like, I'm fine. Watch this. Oh, watch. oh yeah. And then they, they made a meme of this. I mean, <laughs> oh, my God. oh, my God. You just woke up. You were completely knocked out. And then you just went, I'm all right. I'm all right. Yeah. And I was like, damn it. I still remember for the next two hours, all I said was, damn it. That's it? Really? Damn it. And yeah, it is what it is. Oh, right, well. So he caught you with that left. He stunned you. And, and I kicked my that, face. Yeah, that that's okay. So that was so but yeah. you know what? This I, I watched this exact thing happen to Trey Talisman like 10 years before Ooh. this, or like seven or eight years before this, when I first started watching UFC. I was like, I can do that. And then my friends were like, You're 30 years old, you can't do this. So and I think this was 38. So it was kind of interesting. So in like I think eight years in like seven, eight years, I went from not knowing how to fight at all to getting in the ring with a heavyweight champion of the world. So not that's, you know, No, no, I think, I, I, honestly, I think this is an incredible accomplishment. I don't think there's anything funny about this. I'm looking at this going, wow, like you, you went in the ring and you rolled with the best in the world for a world title and you lost. Like this is what- Three what days that? notice. Three days notice. The thing I'm most pissed off about is that you gave back the hamburger. Yeah, I, I still understand. I'm like, no, eat, I, I'm still eat mad. Eat the I, fucking no. hamburger. You, gotta, you can't eat. eat you can't eat like crap, or else eat it's like, hamburger. hey, what if it goes a little long? It was pretty know, funny. I, I and Brendan's a train? really nice guy. Hey, what's up? What's up? Hey, what's up, Brendan? Yeah, How you doing? He man? also seemed like a. He also seemed like a gentleman. He came over. He, oh, he checked great on guy, you. great guy, great guy. Really, really nice guy. I like Ryan. He's a really nice guy. Yeah. Really nice guy. And, hey. It was, it's just work, you know, it's just, it's just the job. It is what it he, is. He was very After, happy or he was very thankful that you took that fight on three days notice, right? Like, didn't yeah, you tell me? I, I don't think anybody in the world would take, I don't think too many guys in the world would take a three day, uh, three day notice fight for, for something like that. You know, I think that says uh, a lot. I think that says a lot. In retrospect, sometimes I wish I, did, I gave myself a little more time and then took another fight, but you know what? I was, I think, 38 or maybe turning 39 at that point. So you're kind of like, well, it's now or never because I, I kind of on a time constraint. I didn't really start like I didn't really start MMA or fighting till um, till after 30. So I learned about I think 30, 30. My first profile was like 31. So I, 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 I trained for about three months before that. And then I kind of went in and just did my thing. So it was like and then I, I was fortunate. I was fortunate to win a bunch of fights. I. And then got and I got got to go there. That was kind of cool. I thought I, it wasn't cool at the time, but now I'm looking back. I was like, that was kind of cool. No, I, I think that's. I think. I mean, as long as listen, at the end of the day, as long as you didn't get severely hurt and you're able to sit no, there and laugh about it, yeah, and you're all good. And let's, let's congratulate. So I got I, I got a quick question for you. So you are you are you are somewhat of a fight enthusiast. I would consider you right. I mean, do you still I like enjoy it. fight? I like it. I watch it. I watch it. 
What do you think about, and this might be a ridiculous question, but I was talking to one of my, one of my buddies, his name's Derek Panza. He's a three-time world kickboxing champion and he runs Panza MMA in Syosset. And I brought up, you know, the whole Jake Logan Paul thing, right? Because these two, yeah. uh, which, which, which is the one that just fought? It was uh, Jake Paul? Jake, Jake Paul, uh, just. Yeah, yeah, no, Jake. I know, Lo I think it's Logan. No, Logan. It was Jake, Jake just fought. Mayweather, Mer Logan fought Mayweather. Jake. Mayweather? Is it Jake or Logan? I don't know. I think it was Jake. I think it was Jake. They look, so they I, look the same. So they, I, I, don't look the same. I think the fact that we don't know is probably part of the problem. Derek, Derek actually turned around and I was like, well, you know, because initially everyone's like, all right, these guys are a joke. This is a joke, this and that. And I and I asked Derek about it, and he's like, No, he's not bad. Like he's like, for for an amateur fighter, the guy's not for an amateur fighter, he's not bad. Granted, like if Floyd Mayweather's in the ring with him in Floyd's prime and he's fighting for, you know, something, Floyd's but, gonna kick the guy's ass in seconds. But what do you what what, what do you think about him? Okay, I, I thought he was pretty good. And then I'm like, <laughs> and then I come from a guy that's like, I, I learned later on in my life. And then I, I, I realized boxing is one of those sports that like, I, I, I have four professional boxing, pro boxing fights. And then I realized that like, you need a lot more work to, um, to, to fight at that elite level. And then the reason he did pretty good, no, I, 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 my hat's off to him, but he was like 40 pounds bigger than Floyd, 30 or 40 yeah. pounds bigger. And then he had a good strategy, tie him up, so give him no space, so he can't really let, let go off, let, uh, let off on him. So, hey, I, hats off to the guy. I don't know, you know, like, um, I'm one of those guys that started late. So, hey, mm. if you, you want to keep going, hey, if you're looking for another fight, I'd be down. I'm cool. Yeah. I'd be down. I, I'd be down. I, whatever. Hey, put on some boxing gloves. Hey, no gloves. I don't care. I just, I just watched um, this guy, Jake Boswick. The bare knuckle fighter. I met this guy in, um, I met this guy in Miami. I'm at the Russian bathhouse with a, a group of my buddies. We're all training down at a place called Hybrid Performance Method, and I go into the sauna and I'm sitting there. And there's this English fellow. He's sitting there, muscular, all tatted up, and his knuckles literally look like someone just like almost attached clay to each one of his knuckles, and you know, my buddy knew him and the guy starts talking, friendliest guy you're going to meet. You know, he had an English accent talking to us, where are you guys from? You know, where are you? You're, oh, you're a fighter. Yeah. Bare knuckle fighter. I'm like, bare knuckle fighting. I didn't even know that there was, I don't know. I'm like, what do you mean? Like <laughs> immediately I'm like, like, like blood sport, like the Kumite, like you're thinking about all these Van Damme movies. And he's like, yeah, because I have a fight at, um, you know, at the hard rock in, in Florida, uh, you know, this was last week. I think he won the fight. And, um, but he was telling me about how he'll just sit at home with a board and just pound his hand on the board to just develop this. I mean, yeah. his, his, no, I've never seen anyone's hands look like this in my life. And when I saw this guy fight, I was like, holy shit. Like it was, it was, it was his next level stuff. I mean, that's, that's, that's pretty insane. Would you ever consider bare, bare knuckle fighting? Oh, I thought about it. I thought about it, but I'm ugly enough. I don't want to get any uglier. This is a goddamn problem. <laughs> I think Jeez. you're handsome, man. Derek said okay, that. I, 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 I think I, you're I, handsome. I, okay, so I appreciate it, but I'm like, <laughs> damn. I was like, because guaranteed you're going to get messed up. That's where, like, that's like, guaranteed you're going to get messed up because it's a fight. You're going to get hit. So think about getting hit with no glove. And then when you... I didn't get it. Oh, throwing with a glove and no glove, oh, big difference. Big, big difference. So I'm like, I don't and know. E even breaking your hand, I would be concerned about <laughs> that. You know. Yeah, the glove is basically to protect your hand. So 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 you can endure all that punching. So and uh, and bare knuckle box bare knuckle boxing, guys come out flying. There's no uh there's no like pawing around for uh two or three rounds to figure out because sometimes we find boxing kind of boring because they they spend two or three rounds timing the guy. But I'm like, in bare knuckle boxing, poof, no such thing. You're coming out flying. Well, I'm going to try to pull up. I'm going to try to pull up a video of that. But first, there, mm -hmm. uh, and this is something you can address, Paul. Like, do people try to kind of goad you on? Like, say, if you're at a bar or you're out, like, has anybody tried to like, like, take you on? And and how do you handle those situations? Because I'll, I'm going to show a clip here for you guys. There was an incident. Uh, a guy oh, yeah. named Joe, Joe Schilling. Schilling. Right? Yeah. 
yeah so this guy bumped into him at the bar or something and then you know kind of made a move on him so this is just a regular dude here and then the mma guy comes up sort of bumps into him nicely and then the guy says something to him turns around makes who is this guy this guy the He's guy facing bellator facing bellator we show yeah, that again. So, who is this guy with the with with the tie on? He's just trying. He's to just a regular shit. patron who I guess gets drunk there regularly, and he made a little move towards him, and the guy just finished him with two punches. And so now the guy's trying to sue the guy for knocking him out, even though everybody in the bar is like, "Yeah, this guy's an ass." He was. He actually he actually looked like he actually looked like he lunged at him. Yeah. 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 So. Anyway, yeah, self defense. I think that's self defense. I would never throw the first punch. I would try not to. I I take the shot before because I think I think like because uh yeah because I I think if you if I do hit if uh, if you're a professional fighter if you hit somebody it's like a solid weapon. So uh, I'd rather take that shot because I'm like hey if you're gonna lunge to hit me and then I'll, I'll protect myself. But, yeah, but it, I feel in all honesty, in all honesty, that guy it, 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 it's clear as day. You see him. Yeah, kind of almost jump at him. If your adrenaline's going, you, and I see a guy come at me like that, and I'm with my family, my my first response is to protect the people around me and protect myself. Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't. I think there is an. There's got to be an argument there. I don't know how that's. I wish more people would 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 kind of learn from videos like like that. You're seeing it too much. Who was that? There was another story, Derek. Um, I think in the last year, a, a bunch of college kids. Uh, two of them got drunk and one of them was in oh. the bathroom and he was remember that and, and yep. this kid oh my god this kid put a, a royal ass whooping on, oh, yeah, on, on the these guys football with, player. yeah yeah oh the, my again. yeah it yeah a, crazy 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 uh, crazy and, and i'm gonna tell you I, from like knowing how to fight and not knowing how to fight is a big big <laughs> difference i still remember when i first walked in the boxing gym i was like i thought i was pretty i was like a a pretty good level of like high level athlete and then i used to get beat up like i used to get beat up like i used to get black eyes all the time i i my guys smaller than me and i'm like damn what what is going on here you know you know when you're a big buff guy and then you uh, you can run fast and you can lift the house and then all of a sudden you go in that ring and you're like trying to fight somebody it's the, oh my god it's the, if you don't know what this you're is- doing it's a different ball game so this is Jake Vogue of Boswick of uh, fighting Vogel, um, Tyler Vogel. Yep. And this was actually, I mean, this fight was a bloody mess. Oh, so Boswick's, I, Boswick's the, the one with the blue wraps on. Yeah. So I'm sitting next to this guy in the sauna. Could not have been any more friendly. <laughs> nicest, I mean, nicest guy. Just, you know, but. Watch this for a second. This is actually pretty. I mean, he gets a massive cut. I mean, the next day he put a picture up. He might he had to have 20 something stitches in his eye. Oh, for uh, sure. For <laughs> sure. And then like, and then what gloves help you not get cut too? Like, oh my God. I, I, I just can't imagine all the cuts that would that would happen. But we haven't really seen anything yet. Um and and these are these are uh, five rounds, it says. Okay, five round five of five. So yeah, they're not going for 10, 12 rounds. You know, no, you, you can't. So, you can't. Yeah. So what was wild was when they went to, um, when they went to the decision, it was a draw, and on the, and during the draw, they basically are unable to elect an additional round, and they're like, "We went to the card, and the card basically, they, I don't know how the guy put it. I think he might say, so they go word. again. Yeah, we're gonna have to go another round to decide. Oh, geez. And both guys were like, okay, and the announcers were like. This is what's crazy about bare knuckle fighting. Most of the, the the time, you would see guys. All right, I'm done. I'm through it. And now, last second, they're like, "You got to go another round." Like that's got to be that's got to be debilitating too mentally. I mean, imagine some of the fights that you've been in where you're like, "Oh no, you got to go another round," right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's just like, oh man, and then when you're completely gassed and you got, and if you don't know, you got to go another round. You're like, oh no. Yeah, especially big guys. As heavyweights, so, yeah, <clears throat> gas is a uh, what. Uh, Cardio is like a very limited thing sometimes. <laughs> Look at this. Ooh, you just caught him. That's crazy. Roger. That's crazy. Hey, Derek, just... Derek, I don't know, man. You can't keep playing these fight videos up. You never know what, what kind of things I'm going to do next. I know. So, well, that's I... that's the next question, Don, is, okay, you've gone through all this. You've football, bobsled, follow the bobsled, uh, 
you know, get knocked out in MMA, like at what point do you say, okay. And, and even the stunt stuff, like Don can speak to this. Like, at what point do you go like, I got to start taking care of my body and my brain here. And, and now obviously you, you're getting into the acting. Can you tell us a bit about that? Maybe Don could offer some advice around that too. What do I know about that? Well, just the guy, this is the people you work with, right? Like, I'm, you know, because Ryan does, did his own stunts and all that. And is there some point where you're like, okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Once you start breaking bones and you're, and you're, come on. I mean, how do you, I mean, he used to do some of his own stuff. And, you, and, when, and when, when I see some of my clients get hurt through some of these stunts, I mean, yeah, you got to think differently about it. But, you know. So what's your plan, Paul? Oh, I, my, my plan. So I, I don't think I'm fighting anymore. I think I'm going to go try and get a, like some plastic surgery and get my face all fixed one of these days so I can look like I can look handsome again or semi handsome <laughs> or I try. But yeah, um, I, I don't I don't think I'm fighting anymore. But I, but just uh, I don't know. It's life is so much. I guess maybe this is what sports is all about, that, you know, you have that like adrenaline and you know, being, the, being able to compete and stuff like that. And then you, you foster a lot of that during our practices. You always make us compete. We're always competing against each other. So it's like, regardless of what sport and what, whatever you're in, you know, when you lose that, when you lose that feeling of com- competition, it's just, life's just not nearly as fun. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, so you never know, but I honestly, I'm 99% done, but hey, if one of those Jake Paul, Logan Paul want to give me 500K to fight, I'd be like, I, I, I was like, sure, let's rock and roll. But, you know, beyond that, yeah. So I'm just, gonna, I'm taking care of my body, not too much contact. These days when I fight, I don't spar. I just hit some pads, hit some bag, nothing too crazy. I know working on my flexibility, mobility, and certain things like that so I can, um, so I can perform at a better level when I'm on set <clears throat> rather than getting hit in my face. Because, I realized after my last fight, I had a, I took a fight of, in Korea at 40, and I fought this ex UFC guy, and then I felt I comp- I felt like I was I felt I should have done a lot better, but you know I got in a little trouble. Usually I get out or or fight to get out, but then after I was like, nah, I think I'm okay on this one, you know. So and then I think that was I realized that time I was like, yeah, you're, Paul, I think your your time's up. So it is what it is. So Paul, you've you've traveled to a lot of different to a lot of different spots. Were there were there any spots that you know you went to fight at where you said to yourself, "All right, this is this is a little out of my comfort zone," or or this is a, a little bit maybe uh, like under like a like an underground like something sp- specific? Oh, it's out of my comfort zone. Like I don't know. Like I don't know fighting for a world championship in, in front of twenty three thousand people in the <laughs> that was three days ago. That would be a little out of my comfort zone. You know what I'm saying? Uh, should yeah, eat the burger, but, dude. You should eat the burger. Yeah. So, but different yeah, but Most of the time, you're like, I'm, I'm okay. It's like, it's like a business. It's like job, you know. But it's a job where you actually look at the guy the day before, and you're like, we're gonna fight each other tomorrow. But other than that, it's like, it's cool. Most of the time, I, most of the time, actually, all the time, when we after the fight, you beat each other up a little bit. You give us, and you give each other a hug and call it a day even no, regardless regardless of what kind of beef or whatever you you start because sometimes you know like i i'm a friendly guy i'm super friendly I, you, you can ask derek at least hopefully derek would say i'm a friendly guy but um yeah i most of the time i just i but most of the, most of the fighters are that way too you know we're all human beings it's just hey for entertainment purpose but sometimes you have to develop some type of animosity because you do have to punch the guy in the face and try and take him out because uh, we do have uh, win bonuses, so you got to go get your win bonus, or you only get half the pay. That's that really sucks. Well, I'll tell tell you this, Don. Like he, Paul comes out, he's like, "You're 43, <laughs> Paul. 43. Yeah, I'm turning 43 in next month. Next month. So y- you know what it's like to be about that age, uh, Don. And he comes out and he sprints with us. He puts on the spikes and he talks shit to the young guys. Like, oh, I'm gonna kick your ass today, whatever. And he comes out and he brings it. So, and every time I watch him, like we did, we ran some runs over 60 meters. I'm watching Paul going, oh, come on, please don't pull a hamstring, don't strain, you know. And he gets through it, so he's got something going on. Um, and and like you like you said, he brings the competitive juices, even uh, you know, at this age. So I think that's that's pretty important. 
Yeah, like I, I, I said, believe you got to remain competitive. For, you got to try. Like, I know I can't <clears> beat half these guys, but I just talk smack anyways, just so they, uh, everybody goes a little bit harder. And then be like, hey, I'm going to prove that old guy wrong. You know? I but, love it. I love it. Oh, you got to come to our practice. You you would laugh oh, your yeah, no, your, no, no, you would laugh, you would laugh your butt off. Listen, yeah, as th- soon as my 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 life has changed, you know, very drastically over the last year, and as soon as <laughs> I can get in and out of camp, I mean, I'm already booked to go. I'm taking the family to Whistler next February, which I'm excited about. But that's winter time. Oh, you guys, you guys have a great time. It, it, I, it'll be cannot fun. wait, cannot wait. But I'm I'm planning on at some point coming to see Derek and doing some track workouts and hanging out with them for a few days. So as soon as I do that, hopefully we're going to be able to kind of meet up and we'll all. Uh, oh, oh, that most definitely. And then you're going to be like, and then you're going to be like the rest of the young guys. He's not going to stop talking for the next two hours. I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm going to have fun, fun with that. So are, are you on any social media handles? Is there anything we can tell people to, we want to try and build your popularity. Up oh, oh yeah. Uh, talk uh, to, yeah talk my, to us. my, uh, my Instagram's, um, at paul.typhoon.chang. Oh, that's just a great name right there. Hold on. I'm finding this right now. At paul.typhoon.chang. Typhoon. Hold on. And All then, right. I'm your newest follower. I will. Oh, I will. hey, I, 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 I'm going to, I'm going to follow Don too. So that it, I'm going to, I'm going to follow, I'm going to follow Don too. This is going to be awesome. Yeah, oh, this is gonna be this is gonna be great. I got a new friend. I got a new friend in uh in um in uh, Vancouver. Derek, more of a reason to come out now. We're gonna do some sprint training. Yeah, do some sprint training. I know you can hear me yap for, for hours and hours. It's gonna be hilarious. Yeah, like I know, Ryan I, has killed Paul. Stuff. Uh Dwayne Johnson has killed Paul. Now you can kill Paul, Don, when you come out yeah, here. Yeah, and then I, I, I we'll have the uh, masters race, old guy versus old guy. <laughs> I I love it. I'm gonna send, I'm gonna send uh I'm, I'm sending a picture to Ryan. And being like, do you re- do you recognize this guy or do you recognize his crotch? Let me know. And see what he says. He's gonna get a kick out of that. But um, awesome, awesome, awesome. Listen, man, it was awesome meeting you. And thanks, thanks hey, for awesome coming on. Awesome meeting you, Don. I really appreciate I, it. It was I awesome. Been, I had fun. Oh, this is a this is a this is a blast. And we'll let you know when the episode comes out. Derek, that was fantastic. I haven't laughed like that in a while. Yeah, fantastic. Paul took this on uh, three uh, two days notice, so he's days like, notice. oh no, one night notice. You one night. Sorry, I wasn't. <laughs> and I was like, don't worry. It's, a, hey, it's 48 hours way more than I'm, what I'm used to. And you know what stronger. I'm calling this episode, Paul? What? You should have ate the hamburger. Hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> hey, sometimes I wish I would have ate the hamburger. Damn it. I was like, damn, I spent all that damn money on a hamburger. And I didn't even eat it. Oh, well, it is what it is. Well, look at it. Look at the bright side. You made someone very happy. They got a free hamburger. So it's all good. <laughs> oh, I, um, I, I, I gave someone a damn world title, world heavyweight championship. That, that, he should have been more happy. Yeah, that guy should be kissing your ass for him right now. You no, should, he's cool. He he's actually a really nice guy. I, I yeah, have nothing. Yeah. I have no crap to say about that guy. He did beat me up. So I don't want to get, I don't want none of, I don't want none of that stuff anymore. <laughs> I love it. Great. Have all a right, good course. weekend, guys. Thanks. Thanks for doing this. Yeah, no problem. Thank you, Eric. Nice meeting you, Don. Take care. Have a great one.